Commissioner, and we are gathered here together this evening to discuss the road improvements that's going to take place at 17 and Derrick Inn Road and also 17 and Burton Road. We have um, uh, engineers here, our county manager, engineer Suzanne Cooler and Mr. Nathan Nathaniel Prather, Panth, Prather, Panther, Panther. Like <laughs> and our county manager, Michael Kegler, and they're going to explain all of this information that we've got here. And if you have any questions at the end, we'll do some questions and hopefully we can do some answers. You also have a brochure to kind of follow along. And then there's a comment card. If you'd like to make some comments, we'll do that as well. All right. Yeah. And I'd also like to introduce, uh, well, make sure. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't Mr. Uh, William Wright, our public works director. He's here too. So we all. Uh, one of us all ought to be able to answer any questions you may have. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Nathaniel Panther to kind of go over the project. Do you have a mic on? Yes. Because you're not loud at it's, all. Uh, it's, it only goes to their equipment. Okay. background the Georgia Department of Transportation owns State Route 25 it is a state maintained route but we get a lot of complaints from constituents that of the safety of both Burton and Derrick Inn Road so what we did is we pulled the accident reports and then we gave those to the Georgia Department of Transportation and they essentially did what's called an intersection control evaluation and they looked at all options traffic signals close the median our cut, which is what's proposed, they looked at everything. And when they, they did their analysis, implementing an R cut is what was the most cost effective and short term solution to improve operation and safety of the intersections. So, <clears throat> to try to explain in general terms what an R cut is, if on the main lines your turning movements are not restricted, if I'm coming from Savannah and I want to turn left onto Derrick Inn Road, I can I can make that maneuver but what is restricted is the right turn or the, excuse me the left turn movements off of the side streets and the reason that's restricted is because the most serious crashes we have at intersections that aren't operating safely are when someone takes a chance and pulls out here and they get t-boned by someone on on the main line those are the most severe and typically turn out to be the most fatal crashes that we experience so how does that work then? If, if you live on Derrick Inn Road and you want to go down to um, Berwick, the Kroger, Walmart, what have you, you would have to make a, a right turn out of the intersection. And as proposed now, again, these are concept level plans, but as proposed now, you would go down to the, the traffic signal at Dean Forest Road and you'd make a U-turn there. That traffic signal will have to be modified when these plans are implemented. It will not stay in its current configuration. There will have to be different phasing to accommodate that U-turn maneuver. Now, what we've asked this, and I drove it, we all, I think most of us drove it just to get a feel for it. This, this raised median does not continue. It, it goes down to about here, and then it turns into a painted median. We've asked GDOT to consider, okay, if Dean Forrest is here, Derek ends here, can we make that U-turn movement in the middle so you're not getting tied into the traffic signal, all the traffic down at the signal? So they're investigating that. Again, these are not final, but these are the safest alternatives on the short term that we can fix the operation and safety. One thing that's different from Derrick Inn Road and Burton Road is that we've had a couple pedestrian fatalities for folks that cross over to go to this uh, the convenience store. So GDOT's going to put in a pedestrian traffic signal. Only traffic to stop in both directions to allow someone to make that maneuver as a pedestrian. So that's the only difference. Burton Road, Burton Road will will act in the same exact fashion, except you will go down to Quaco Road to make your U-turn, or if you're coming uh, out of the apartment complex or this commercial area. There's an existing median break down here where you can make a U-turn. So again, these are, th this, is a, this is a short-term fix while we, and, and one other thing we wanted to talk about, we also have funding to do a, a, a corridor study. And that study is going to evaluate the entire uh, Ogeechee Road from Interstate 516 down to the Ogeechee River and look at options for short-term, medium-term, and long-term improvements. 
we talked about it, and one of the biggest things I saw coming down is you have a section that you have a sidewalk, then you have some sections you have a bike lane, and then you have other sections where you've got folks walking in knee-deep grass and no pedestrian facilities. So that's one thing that study would flush out, but it's probably also going to look at different intersection control alternatives at all these intersections in totality and see how they work together and what other intersection improvements can be made. But on the short term, these are the two major ones that we've gotten complaints about. And that's why when we pulled the accident reports, we asked GDOT to focus on these two. And these are two short term improvements that will improve the operation and safety. Is it gonna fix all accidents? No, it's not. But if you have an accident, it would tend to be less severe than it would be if you have someone, as I said, going trying to make that left turn and then getting T-boned. Those are your worst worst uh, type of crashes. So that's a general overview. I don't know if y'all want to add anything. Mm -hmm. Outside of that, I mean, we're ha happy to answer y'all's questions. I mean, it's made to be interactive. Well, just to make sure I understand, when we live on Burton Road. Okay. So we would come up to the end of Burton, not be allowed to make a left hand turn. Yes, ma'am, that's correct. Right? Yes, ma'am. They will modify the intersection of Quaco Road. Because right now, if you wanted to do a U-turn, right now they have no U-turn signs. You have to go down to the next unsignalized median break as uh, Larchmont, I think. Mm -hmm. So they're, they've committed that they would modify that intersection and make them the, the changes needed to make that U-turn movement. Yeah. Yeah. So, and it's the same thing. This is not signalized, but there's already a left turn or a U-turn there. They would extend it to add a little bit of queuing. So if you came out of that, I guess it's a gas station and apartment complex, you would come out, get down here, and then go back north. They, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. yes. One of the issues as we're thinking about this is the growth that's happening in this area. It, it's coming this way. I, I suspect in the next five years, we're going to have a whole lot of development going down uh, get your road so that's one of the reasons we're looking at we want to look at that this corridor because it's going to be a whole lot of growth you you, you can see it now uh, it's going to be a whole lot of growth trucks the container yards yes ma'am yeah And, and, and we've got the police department uh, represented too, and that's one of the things that we're looking at, you know, stepping about enforcement, because uh, I can tell you, and, and I'm out here quite a bit, there is a lot of speeding going down there. So, you're, so what you're saying is there is some thought process about the speed enforcement? Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. right, right now, the, uh, last year the commissioners allocated uh, some additional resources to traffic enforcement. We, when we uh, created the department, we, in the last year, we've added uh, officers for speed enforcement. Uh, and, you know, we're a little short staffed now, but it's, it's anticipated that we're going to expand on that and have more speed enforcement because people are going to speed if you don't see the, the officers out there. Yeah. And they, they're, doing a, they're, 
they're doing a good job now. We, we, we just moved them around so much, but we've got uh, several areas throughout the county that we've had to add speed enforcement because of those issues. Um, GDOT has now indicated they're proceeding with doing the actual design. There's a couple, fa funding's one issue, and as they get into the design further and looking at signal modifications, how much the project costs determines what pot of money they can pull it from. Um, generally speaking, because there's no right-of-way required, we're probably looking at two to three more months of design and getting to something that's more of a final plan set, then you start vetting that. So I would expect, assuming they find the money and get the plans done, that sometime later in the fall, you would start to see construction started on this. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. So, let, so as part of that intersection control evaluation, they looked at whether a traffic signal was warranted or not. And when you look at the, there's warrants for a one hour delay, four hour delay, eight hour delay, school zones, pedestrians, there's a whole bunch of warrants you look at. The issue is, in, in general terms, the volumes on Ogeechee Road are so high and the volumes on Derrick Inn Road are so low that you can't justify and meet the warrants to stop traffic on Ogeechee Road to, to let a couple cars out. Not, I'm, I'm just, that, that's how it's looked at and judged. The, uh, this signal, at least, if it were warranted, is, I believe is far enough away. It's about 1,000 to 1,200 feet is the minimum signal spacing you would want. Um, for Burton Road, that's about 900 feet. So on top of it not being warranted, it's too close to do. But I, I know you asked about Derek Inn. So because the signal wasn't warranted, this is the second best option to fix the pedestrian safety issue. Or, or try to improve it um, in this area, considering I think we've had two or three fatalities. It's, that's just not cost effective. One, two, you'd have to buy right away, and they're trying these quick response projects. They try to do within the existing right away, and that's yeah. Yeah, we've got. I'm trying to get you all in order. now is being considered let, let me explain what is out there now is being considered because these improvements like i said are short term and they're based on the existing volumes they're, they're trying to look at a quick fix our study that we're going to look at the entire corridor it takes into land use it takes into future development it, it looks at all of that in totality and we project out you know 20 30 40 years what are those traffic volumes going to be and what are those projects we need to start working on now so we're prepared for that so that study we're going to do is going to look at that. These don't always look at that stuff because we're trying to find a quick fix to make improvements to operation and safety. Okay, the, question yes, ma'am. Now, currently what you're saying is, so I'm understanding mm -hmm. I live on Derrick Road. I am twice a day. I transport my daughter to and from school. And okay. cross is hell. Yeah. Needless to say. So now to make that left turn. Left turn. Yep. So now you're telling me no more left turn. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's what Am I correct on that? You are correct. As proposed now, that is what that, that plan is. Again, we've asked GDOT to consider Derrick Inn and Dean Forrest are maybe 12, 1300 feet apart. We're asking them to consider put, putting that U-turn in between the two so y'all wouldn't have to go to the signal and there's room to do it, but that's something they're going to evaluate. Again, these are concepts. Now that they're into the design, they can really start looking at those. Yeah. They do make that turn, they make that U-turn at Dean Forrest, there's been accidents. I believe that. Yeah. On Dean Forrest. Yeah, because I, I don't think that signal's really set up it's for that right safe. now. It's not safe. Yeah. And the speed on 17 yeah. is out of control. I understand y'all got cops and cameras and all of that stuff, but you've got such an influx between soldiers, civilians, sure. Richmond Hill mm -hmm. people coming here, there, and everywhere, and it is just, it's out of control. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I, I believe that. I believe that. Yes, ma'am. I, I think she, uh, let me work my way back around. Did you just say that, that uh, uh, they're already going into further into their stage of creating a design, so what we say here has no impact? No, that's not weird. Okay. We, I think we gave you all a comment card. Okay. We're, hap we're happy to provide any additional okay. feedback that we get on this. Okay. Sure. Um, here's, here's my reality of, of coming out of here. I, I live back down in here. This is Burton Road. And if I want to turn left, when I want to turn left, to go on to Quaco Road, it's when I can get in here, I'm on the right-hand lane, but it's a hit and miss whether I can get over here to get off the Quaco Road because it's that's such a, near, uh, such a short yeah. road. So sometimes I still have to go all the way down and make that U-turn. Then when I come back this way, and get into this lane to make my turn back on to Burton. If if these people in in this left hand lane choose to stop and leave a gap for me to turn, I'm playing a game of chicken because the guys in the right hand lane aren't stopped. Mm -hmm. right now. And you can't see I agree. But you I, I complete I a hundred percent see what you're saying. But this project doesn't change that. You have that condition now. Right. The only way to fix that is to close the meeting completely, which we don't want to do right now. If we did, you would have, to, I mean, the other option is, and this is, I believe was vetted through that ICE, you close that meeting completely, and then you would have to come down, make a U-turn here to which get into Burton Road. And, yeah. I'm but just I, telling you what my I, I, I believe it. I know, I've experienced it. I, I see that happening. But whether we do this project or not, that doesn't change. We're trying to fix, like I said, that le that T-bone accident that is your most severe to minimize those. This is, again, the short term, it's an improvement. It's not the end game. But and they plan to make a U-turn at Quaco then. Yes, that signal will be, that. we've already talked, that signal will be modified to allow the U-turn mm -hmm. movement. If they do the median and raise it up on the, uh, just going down a little bit um, for, their, for their inroads. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Is there going to be another lane there for us, for individuals to actually... If you look down, down there, there's, actually, there's a wider shoulder there, and so they may have to widen out a little bit, but there would be, we would give, make sure that you, you look at the turning movements using di uh, digital software, that you can watch, look at the wheel paths, and make sure that there's adequate turning movement for most vehicles. It likely will not be large enough for the tractor trailers. They would have to modify their route and get, probably go up 307 and figure out a different way. That, that's very true. That's pretty, you, pretty much my next question. Okay. I'm a truck driver and yep. I have a truck parked in that lot, the new lot. Uh, okay. Right. Yeah. So we're talking about speed control. When you come out of that lot, that speed coming around that corner, they're coming pretty fast. Yeah. And you can't see it. It's almost just as bad as the intersection. Now, I get it, there's is not much traffic coming out of that lot yet. That's this driveway? Or is it further down? Okay, the next one down. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, now I get it, there's not that much traffic coming out of that lot, probably only maybe once or twice a day. Yeah. But that's still an issue with that speed coming around there. And I think that's a, because I think it gave me a ticket, that little speed control thing that's it's right after the light. Mm -hmm. Is that what that is? That's no, that's a, a no, that's, that's a, a, that's a, just a camera. Yeah. Uh -uh. We're, the state law does not allow, you can only ticket in a school zone, I believe. Mm -hmm. you can, we, can, we can't physically put those speed can't, and I'll, I think that's true. I, I'm trying to, I can't figure out where it's at, but I got a ticket the, right there somewhere. It looks only, like they yeah. see you the picture. It, yeah, it it's like probably the school zone. It had to be a school zone one because. It was school zone. It shouldn't have because I don't, I believe state law currently does not allow it because that question has been raised a couple of times that can we put those speed cameras in other areas and it's it has to be i mean obviously this is, from what i'm taking from it because i've heard you say cost effective a few times yeah. so we're not going to get a lot that's pretty much not going to happen yeah. and i don't you keep saying short term mid, middle a uh, long term yeah. but that's different for us because i don't know what your short term is so it sounds like this is going to be a, a, this is pretty much going to be close to the solution 
that's when, gonna uh, happen. Yeah. So there has to be some type of speed control to further back to stop that speed. And especially if you put a crosswalk right there. Yeah. Because just because you put that there doesn't mean that somebody's paying that's paying attention and they see that. Very true. Very true. But that the difference is there's actually a traffic signal associated with that. So it, it'll flash yellow and then it'll flash red and then it'll go solid red. And those stop bars, we if you've been on Bay Street or Duren, these there are examples of the I'm sorry? Victory has it too. Victory, yeah. Vic I, that yes, yes, they did just put some of those in. That's right. Stop that. No, no, it's not. No, it's not, not cost. cost. We've had three, fat, two or three fatalities here that help justify the warrants. Just because you don't, okay. The war. It's all based on warrants. That's all. It, So to one, two things, I, so I don't think I answered your short, medium, long term. Short term, two to five years, that's what we're looking at. Medium, five to 10 years, and then long term, 10 plus years of what needs to be done. Um, that, this, corridor is, this corridor is managed and is, all these signals all operate together or all timed together for the different periods of the day. So that, that's already happening. It's just that the traffic signal right here just isn't warranted. What, which intersection? Oh, so that's a different, that's a different jurisdiction. I understand that. That's a different jurisdiction and different jurisdictions make. I, I've, I've worked in this for about 17 years. GDOT is, I've, I've, I trust them and I've never met, known them to make a decision based on money. If something is warranted in a safety improvement, they'll find the money to make it happen. At this location, be, and it, the easiest way I can, there's too much, I'm sorry? Can we buy one? No. Can we get together and buy some traffic signal to go there so we can be safe? You also got carport, a carport right across 
across yep. the street, and you know their business is never stopping. I know. So there are actually trucks coming out of there going Savannah direction, starting eight yard across the track. Oh, she she had one down. Different. Yes, sir. No, and let me, so when we partnered with GDOT to make those intersection improvements, we added two left turn lanes on, on Ogeechee Road and, and two left turn, t turn lanes off of Quaco. When you have dual left turn lanes, they have to have their own individual phase where you have a green arrow to make that maneuver, and then it goes yellow, and then it goes red, and then the traffic on 17 is free to go. But even if there's no traffic over here, that red arrow means you can't make that turn. When it was just one lane of traffic, you could make that turn if there was nobody coming. Mm -hmm. So in, the, in this condition, when the modification's made, you will only be able to make the U-turn when, when there's traffic is stopped coming southbound. So, uh, you're gonna make the people coming off of Quaco Road and turn right onto Ogeechee have to stop. Possibly. No, no turn on red, because that's part of the problem mm -hmm. right now, the yeah. traffic network is stopped. Yeah. That lane is free flowing 24 seven, Yep. Never stop. Uh, that, as they start looking into the details, that all has to be accommodated for. I think it will cause more problems if it's just that one problem right there. Burton or Derek? Both. I live in Derek Lane. Derek Lane. I've been there for five years now, and now there's uh, the second subdivision behind us. It's like the apartment across the street, more traffic coming mm -hmm. in and out. I think that the doing that would just create some bigger problems than just one bit. Okay, I too live in Derek Landing, um, but I have a question about Derek Landing and uh, Burton Road. So you're saying that for Burton Road, they're they're thinking of either making a U turn at the Quaco traffic light, yes, or just kind of like going up further to do. No, right now you, I'm I'm probably wasn't clear. Right now there are signs that restrict U turn movements because of the, the, where the concrete median is here and here, that's gonna to have to be modified to allow that maneuver. So because there's not room for that now, you do have to go down. But what, when this is implemented, that would be modified as part of this to allow the U-turns here. So if this goes forward, you would still make u turn You would again be allowed to make U-turns at Quaco Road. You still need to be able to get over to that far lane. You, you do. In that very short amount of space. I, you, that's very true and I, again, but it, if you're gonna have an accident merging, that's typically a side swipe. Uh, it could be severe, but the worst are when someone's frustrated, takes a chance, darts out there to make a left and gets T-boned. And that's what this, that's what this. Numbers on how many people, how many T-boned, how many accidents? I, I, yes, we, yeah, we, we have all the accidents. I don't have it with me tonight, but we do have the data that we forwarded that we can provide. I'm sorry. So half of the residents Yes, roundabouts are considered as a part of the intersection control evaluation, but when you, st as again, when you look at short-term costs, the, the roundabouts are very expensive to build, very expensive. But once it's there, it's minimal maintenance. So as part of that bigger study we're talking about, I think you're gonna see a lot of that happening. And I, GDOT not tell us that they're considering a roundabout. They this doesn't affect y'all, but at Chatham Parkway and 17. So it's already being looked at. That study we're going to complete is going to look at the corridor in totality. They're, they're just considering it. They're not, it's not. Yeah. That, yeah. I get that 17 and Chatham Park are supposed to be the amount of traffic that goes through. That's yep. going to be a bigger roundabout. Yep. But intersections like this, having a smaller roundabout, that will help still slow the traffic as normal without having a significant amount of delay. And we would not have to worry about having anybody get t bones and things like that. That's True. Really mm -hmm. Route. It could be. Because of the amount of traffic that's, that's increasing along with all the new construction that's coming in, Great. Um, that, may be, that needs to be looked at between two to five years versus 10 years out type of solution. I, 
think that's a fair comment. Two things, these projects that they're proposing do not require us to buy any right away. That's right. why, that's it. So it's cost effective, but we can do it quicker. Quick. When we have to do right away, then it, it could be a year from now before we're doing anything. So that's, that's why we're moving towards this on the short. I think you're going to see some roundabouts on the corridor and in the next five to 10 years. That's, best yeah. For, uh, yeah. Very well be. But we're going to vet all that in totality, looking at how over the overall operation with that study. And we should be underway on the study in this summer, and it'll take about 12 months to get through all the evaluation, the data collection, everything associated with it. Okay, <laughs> keep that in mind. Oh, she was here now. And yeah. Okay. to merge out, you know, going this way, and then to get over in the left-hand lane, because I turn on Dean Park, I work up Dean Park, I have to really put the pedal to the metal. Those people coming down 17 are unforgiving. They don't slow down. They, they don't slow down at all. They can see you trying to merge, you know, get in that little lane trying to merge out. They don't care. They don't slow down. As a matter of fact, it look like they speed up. Agreed. So, and I understand, okay, y'all want to do the roundabout, but we still got to merge over in the left-hand lane, and that's a problem right now, just getting in the left-hand lane, taking the right out of Darrison, just getting in the left-hand lane. I think this young lady in front mm -hmm. said that coming out of her home. So you're still looking at accidents because... I don't disagree. Like I said, and, and the young lady back here said, you know, Richmond Hill is building up left and yeah. right, and there's a few other subdivisions and apartments coming. So, and I understand y'all trying to do a, a short-term fix, mm -hmm. But I still feel it's going to be fatalities and accidents. And you, and you said, oh, they might swipe you. I don't want to be hit at all. I, I, I agree with that. But this reduces the number of co if you So let's say we do nothing. And so your options are you can merge it and fight that, which is a fight. I'm not. Or you can worry about traffic coming in both directions, speeding, trying to make a left hand turn. That's, the, that's the how we got here. I'm not saying this is the end all be all, but it, it's operationally. And it's a safer solution than what you currently have out there. I'm not saying it's the best. I'm not saying everyone's going to be happy with it. But it's, let, let me get this gentleman, then you, and then you, sir. I'm just curious. I'm a co owner of Creek House Park, which is a present parade or a stand area right there. Right here. Obviously okay. Thank you. Uh, and I, I, too, I have to champion what's being said here, especially by yourself. That little neck, there are seven housing developments going on there. Richmond Hill, there's 23 housing developments that are in the project of being built. Volume is your issue. Mm -hmm. Volume is going to be the issue. But has there been a, a study done based off the businesses that are going there? Oh, by the way, 40-town is going right across the yeah. restaurant. Yeah, right here. But yeah. the, the business impact of that, because now I live right behind Kroger in Berwick. Okay. I've been rear-ended four times on my 1.2-mile drive to my work, which I know is staying right I know where not to be. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Volume is the bigger issue. I agree. And it, it seems like, and, and I'm a private military, so I understand being the car before the horse all day long. Yep. But here, again, the infrastructure is not keeping pace with the growth. Mm -hmm. and, and, and your short-term solution, although I have to give props, I appreciate it. At least something's being done. Someone is trying something to do that. But this should be a long-term solution thing to them because the town of Cubs has Yes, sir.
first part, not hit the second. So the first, so the, it looks like there's already a decent acceleration lane that could, as they get into this, that could be extended, and then you would have a, a deceleration lane likely for that U-turn area. But adding a third lane in there, it, it it would defeat the purpose because then you're starting to get to. Well, they're still looking, I mean, this is concept level stuff. That's what they're getting into the weeds of now, figuring out all that stuff. But again, they're, they're pushing it to be at the signal. I, if we were designing it, it wouldn't be at the signal. It'd be in between the two intersections. But you would have a, de you, you would have a deceleration lane to get into, to slow down and, and then stack there until you could make the U-turn. But again, these, these type of quick response projects are trying to limit the amount of right of way. And when you get to adding lanes and, and widening, that's when you start having to buy right of way and it becomes a bigger project. Okay, well, I'm, I didn't understand then. So let, come, come up after and then we'll talk. But, I understand. That makes it even more difficult for us to make sure I'm timing it correctly, you know, for safety. And I'm just wondering, has that been considered in the thought process? And then second question, what's going to be done to limit because I'm seeing it look like there's gonna be another trucking big trucking thing that's coming from Tuscany now. Is that what I think that's what it looks like to me and they're not gonna figure it out what it is. But is there any thought in the eliminating future? I mean you know you can't eliminate people traffic, but commercial traffic. So going back, I think maybe I understand. What this does, it reduces the number of conflict points at the intersection. A conflict point is a point where two vehicles can have a crash. And it, it reduces that, which reduces then the, the percentage chance of having an accident. Again, it's not perfect. I'm not saying there's not going to be accidents, but the, if there are, they tend to be less severe. So I think your question is, in the overall looking at what needs to be done here, is accounted for, that merge point. Yes. Well, I think he has a second question, Suzanne, and then that gentleman right. in the back and, was next. And, and so to answer your question about uh, permits and trucks, um, so what controls that is zoning, right? So if it's zoned to allow that, then the county can't legally not issue a permit. And why would um, all the trucking permits issued but, to allow all those trucks on their end to have access to their end? Never supposed so, to. So if it's zoned for that, then if so the the way to maybe limit future trucking is if a rezoning comes up contact your commissioner and make your under you know, your opinions no citizens, citizens cannot you have to own the property i mean you can if you own the property right um but as you can't rezone someone else's property that's the gentleman in the back had his hand up first i will come They, ha they, they have driven it. It does get driven by GDOT officials. Um, and, and I will point out that like, this isn't a new concept. There are over 50 of these already across the state. So it's not something that's not somebody said, oh, here's a new idea we're going to try in Chatham County. Th it's been proven to reduce accidents nationwide. No. I'm talking about the concept of the RCUT is not a new concept. It, it's been implemented across the state already. That, that is the point of our corridor study. Our corridor study will look at what improvements need to be made to accommodate all of this. So we talked about the travel on speed when you guys need to be putting in the pedestrian crossing. Mm -hmm. When you turn right or you have traffic coming at a fast rate, how is that pedestrian uh, crossing going to impact that traffic that's coming? It seems like you were probably going to have more accidents that are turning out right um, trying to go in if someone presses that button. Mm -hmm. Understand that pedestrians have the right. 
it could increase the likelihood of rear end collisions, but it, 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 it's safer for pedestrians. Well, I agree. Oh, Mr. Thornton, then. I'd have to look into that. I, have, I don't have the history on that. I was, uh, I was sitting in a meeting with Bill Stevens, and he said, never be an entrant on Derrick Hill Road. Put in the minutes of the record. The elimination of the trucks coming in and out on Derrick Hill Road would help us in the minutes now. If you got a track of trailer turning left, you can't see it. Can you cannot see it. You, you can't wait, wait, wait. wait. I get this concept and I, I like it, right? Because pedestrians want to focus on that. But would it not make sense to move this instead of having it here? Would it not make sense to have it here? Just to kind of avoid, because this is the busier intersection where we're turning right and we're going to have the U turn coming up. So instead of having a light here, why not have a light here or even further up here? Whoever's we trying can to raise the question. It, yeah, That's whoever's it. trying to cross it, they're just walking a little bit more and that will kind of solve a lot of the problem. Well, and it's, well, it's a good it's it's a good solution. Right. It's a, and we we'll ask we'll definitely ask for consideration of that. But what we tend to find it, and I'll tell you the example on Bay Street, people are going to cross at the most convenient place, not. And this exactly. is this is where the accidents have happened. So I think that's what they're trying to mitigate. Right. But I'm I'm not. I'll we'll certainly raise the question. And what's happening? To consider the other thing. What if, what if, like if we do add that, no people do not put, like, people do not go to cross sign sign somewhere. Oh, they go to the shortest distance. Yeah. And a we turn around, went over here, and, and then, then you turn. try to go out. Well, see the yeah yeah these will be raised concrete medians. So it would he would have to drive. Not okay. saying he couldn't do it, but okay. so that's all this all is. this green area would be the raised reason. raised to try Perfect. to prevent those movements. Yes, sir. That's a good suggestion, though. Not, now these are, these are raised concrete. These are raised concrete medians. If someone wanted to come across and make an illegal maneuver, they could do it. Um, you, yeah, but if if he if he sees you if he sees you do it, you're going to be in trouble. You going to drive over the concrete? We, I understand. Yeah, but that's that median being so. They tr they tr they tr they tr they, tr they will make it so it's difficult and it will be challenging and it it will be illegal, but like it, it's probably th this fall is what I would expect construction to start. I would say by the end of the year, the, since there's no not a whole lot of right away, it's not that big of a project. But they're they're just getting into design. They're still finding the funding, the cost estimates to see what pots of money they can pull the money from. Right now, yeah. Tomorrow you can. These, there will be concrete medians in here to, to make it very challenging. Some of this will be striped, and if you want to make an illegal maneuver and cause an accident, I mean, that, that would be the, that would be the, the end result. If, if you had an accident, it would be your fault. Cause, I mean, I guess that's equivalent to, you can always run a red light, would you do I'll, it? Yeah, come. Yeah, I was talking about like right now. Just coming here. Yeah. 
come up here. Yes. This straight road right here is yeah. a two lane road. Yes, sir. I mean the left yes. and came down here. What's the prevent? So that now this happening? is concrete. Oh, to come on this side? Yes. Because that con that concrete will likely be extended. So you'd have to like drive like this. Got you. Okay. So th this is just a representation. It's not the final layout, but it would be it's forcing everyone to come on this side. Yeah. If you got over here, you're likely yeah. going to get hit here, here, <laughs> or here. I mean, okay. it, that would be extended I out. Be able to go here because it's not. This no, area, no. That yes. But yes. The yes. I didn't understand. Yes, sir. Just, he beat you. <laughs> just one more question. So, yes, sir. And I'm big on short term, short term, because that construction on Quaco what, it didn't happen too long ago. Yeah. So that was, this is another short term from that short term. Mm -hmm. So, and this one being a short term, is there going to be another short term after that, or will they really start thinking long we, term? Because, like, he said it's growing. Yeah. It's growing fast. We have a study. We got the funding. We have a study programmed. We're hiring. We're going through the consultant procurement process now to hire a consultant to give us this study that will probably take about 12 months to complete. That's going to look at every this corridor in totality, everything. How how would it operate if we did this here? How would it operate if we did this here? What if we do that? Where do we need side? We're looking at it in totality for the long term, the short term, the medium term, and the value of that is now you have now you have data that we can go to GDOT or FHWA and say, we have a need here, we need you to help us pay for it. And we have just to do it. So, yes, yes, it already was. It just wasn't warranted. You're saying that you have the funding that's for the study, right? The funding for the study. The state is paying for the improvement. The county is not bearing any cost right now for any of these, either of these projects. Can't, uh, the, I don't, I mean, I know we've received we, complaints and, and we forward those to G, uh, again, this is a state route, but I think the intersection control evaluation is probably a newer three or four years where they look at all alternatives. Most of the time they'll look at it. In the past, what they would do is look at it. That's is a signal point. warranted? No. Okay, we're not doing anything. Don't, now we're look. now the study methodology is let's look at all options of what can be done. So it's a little different than it was four or five years ago. Uh, she had one then. Yeah. So I, I, it pains me every time I see the school bus trying to come out on Burton Road and turn right. Yeah. So the school bus turns right. Are school buses allowed to make U-turns? And if they are and they make that at Quaco, will they that will. space be big enough for them? They'll have to look at that. GDOT will have to look at that. And if not, they may have to go down to Larchmont. I, I don't have Jeez. the answer. I, I get it, but it's safe. I would rather have my child be on the bus for a couple more minutes than try to fight coming out of here in a left turn and, so, and a car T-bones the bus. I mean, we're, it's, I'm not telling you all this is the best long-term solution, but these options will make it safer for the short, short term while we look at long-term solutions. How long is the short term? Uh, two to five years. <laughs> I mean, I, that what I, th I think I was consistent in years. that. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Okay. We all was thinking it was going to be a connecting road, so we could have made that right out of Darrington, and we could have hit the light at Cottonville, and mm. you know, Walgreens and go to the, you know, CVS or whatever. Has that is the main considered? And so a lot of us, and I, and I'm speaking for me, I would take that route versus going this yes. route yes. because if the road was connected, it's a light that walk by the wall. Yes, ma'am. There's and a little traffic signal. Go to the and, and, and you know, CVS and places like that. Isn't there a county grade that's blocking it though? I, I haven't seen that master plan. I'm not that familiar with it, but we can certainly look at that as they yeah. continue to nice develop to that. To cut straight down, yeah, to provide connectivity. Sure. So let me do Burton because I, I, I can speak to this a little easier. Burton Road to do this and the pot of money GDOT's looking at is 250000 or less. 
to put a traffic signal there, if it were warranted, you're probably looking at seven, eight hundred thousand. To do to do to do a roundabout, you're probably looking at a couple million. That's the gist of what. So that's the gist of magnitude, best I can tell you. There, there are. <clears throat> no, I get it, and it's not an easy answer. There, fatalities are one consideration, but that's not. It's a, it's a smaller one. It's really looking at the volume of traffic on all, all the roads that come to that point. And the unfortunate part is the volumes, as you all have said, and we, we saw driving here, the volumes on Ogeechee Road are so high and continue to increase that these Burton Road, there's just not enough development that's ever going to happen, even with everything going over here, to justify a signal. The other thing that hurts you here is the proximity to Quaco. It doesn't meet the spacing. But that, the warrants are based on delay on the side, side street, one hour, four hour, eight hour, Schools are a warrant, and obviously we don't have that here. Um, but it's really based on the delay, and that delay is accounted for in the volumes. Well, and the volumes are... I understand. Well, it's safer than what, operationally, it, it's safer than what's there now. And that, that's the short-term goal. I, again, I'm not committing to you. This is going to fix it 20 years, 10 years, 5 years, but it makes it safer for the short term. So we can get that study done, identify the critical areas along the corridor we need to focus on, and start chasing money to, to implement those improvements. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that's an important component. I believe that. I believe it. I believe and it's been accident and it's been wall to wall to wall back up. Literally people coming from Richmond Hill that go to work downtown. I mean, it is just a stop. It mm. is just stop traffic. And then that gets bad because then you got the truckers. God bless them. Yeah. They take their big trucks and they just push everybody out the way. So, you know, but I'm being enforced with this. I get what mm -hmm. you're doing, Marisha Martin. Hopefully, but maybe you can have more time. Yeah. Michael, do you want to tell them what you want? You can do it. Right. So, I, I, so, yeah, so that is an enforcement issue that we will request the CPD to increase enforcement. Um, I hate to say it, but, there's an officer behind you, so he's hearing it. Um, but, yes, so CCPD will increase enforcement, and we'll see if we can't slow people down by writing tickets. We got one more, one, more. one more question. Yeah, okay. yeah. Uh, what, is, what is the actual reason they can't put cameras? Speed enforcement cameras? Yeah. My understanding is state law only allows that, because we've gotten this question on some other roads, it only allows it to be tied to a school zone. You can't do those speed ticketing cameras if it's not, that's just how skirt, talk to your state representatives, because that, it's a state law that only allows the cameras to be put in a school zone. Not the intersection. Those are red light. But speed. Those are red light cameras. Speed red detection. Light cameras. The, 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 I think she's talking about. It, and there's no doubt those things work. I mean, CCPD's probably got the data to show the decrease in speeding, and it, most of us have probably gotten a ticket in one of them. Uh, look, Commissioner Mel, I'll talk to you after. Thank y'all so much for coming and expressing yourself. This is what's important. He, he, we, have, we have these uh, comment form, forms here. Yeah. I don't know if anybody's filled one out. I do have one that's complete. 
and I know you probably will have. Well, take them with you. If yes. you don't want to leave it, take it, the address to mail it's on there, and then my email address is on there. You could. You <coughs> yes, can mail it or yep. either email the, it. At the very bottom, the mailing address. So if you want to think about it or come up with other, you know, sure. You yes. send me whatever you want. Can I yeah. ask an important question? A lot <laughs> All of them were. I actually rode through your neighborhood on Sunday, and I, I spoke to I, I spoke to her. Well, I collected your email addresses today, so the, all of that communication will change. At your contact, we will make sure far before today. But I drove through the neighborhood. She said she rode through the neighborhood. Let me talk to her. One and of the things that we want to do is because we're, you, you we're all don't allow signs or anything. Y'all have an HOA, and Which, I was looking for the HOA president so we could get it posted on your page if y'all have. I got yeah. next door. One of the things we want to do, and like I said, this is just conceptual plan. Now, when we get further down the road, we want to come back out and let y'all see what the final plans look like. So, if you leave your e your Email address, whatever, with Commissioner Milton, we'll make sure we'll have, we'll send an email out when we do the next meeting.